Welcome to Blueprint IoT. This video is the first of a video series about a project I'm going to do and I will take you along the ride so you can follow step by step how the project evolves, what kind of product we end up with and today we will talk mainly about the project idea and what's the approach. So first of all the idea is to build a solar tracker, so a device that enables a solar panel to follow the sun. In general, the sun will rise in the east and the sunset will be in the west. So get the most energy out of every solar panel, it's supposed to be facing towards the sun all the time. First of all, we need to build a solar sensor to actually figure out where is the sun right now and what's the perfect angle for the solar panels to maximize the sun harvested in every single moment. Traditionally, you would use some kind of sensor involving light sensitive resistors or light sensitive transistors. I want to do a different approach, capitalizing on microcontrollers, a little bit of code and a bunch of measurements. So first of all, about our setup today, we have a little solar panel right here and we have an ESP32 in a Node MCU developer kit version connected right to the laptop. So you may think that's our basic setup and now we have to figure out what kind of sensor we use, but actually the sensor is already on the table and it's not the ESP32, it's a solar panel. Because it would be kind of ridiculous to develop this kind of solar tracker for a little cell like this. You basically want to do this with bigger panels to harvest a lot of energy. What I was thinking about is why using some sensors instead of a small solar panel like this? Because there will be probably some kind of correlation between what the sensor is measuring and what's the reality for the solar panel. So maybe the sensor is recommending a certain angle, but the solar panel is actually a bit more efficient in a little bit of different angle. So why not measure it in the first place with a solar panel? And those little panels are super cheap these days. It's only a couple of bucks. I just hooked them up to some jumper cables and I will go ahead and measure the voltage which the solar panel is creating right now. And probably we will need some kind of step down converter or resistor in between because the ADC of the ESP32 can only accept up to 3.3 volts in this configuration here and our solar panel will probably produce a bit more. So let's go ahead and do this measurement. Our measurement setup is good to go and we are already measuring about 5 volts. So that's already close to 2 volts more than we can actually accept. As soon as we start playing around with the solar panel and actually facing it more towards our artificial sun, which is an LED light in our case, or take it away from there, we can see a voltage difference. And that's actually what we are looking for, because we want different voltage levels based on the angle of the solar panel, because that's the reality of energy production. And that's what we want to sense with the solar panel to get the data for the right angle to calibrate the angle of the main panel, which is not on the table right now. So as of right now, we are most interested in the maximum voltage. And this seems to be around 5, 5.2, maybe 5.2 volt. It's indoor here. Of course, I have the windows, but not a lot of sun is coming in. It's a rainy day today. So probably there will be a little bit more voltage. I think this solar panel is rated to 6 volts. So we will just go ahead and calculate it from 6 volt downwards. Of course, we need to do some more testing in the sunlight, but that's just the first try. So let's give it a shot. So as of right now, since we're not sure about the maximum voltage, I will just go with a simple 50-50 split of the voltage, because in case it's only 5 or 5.1 volt, one third to two third would be actually the perfect split. But since there may be a higher voltage in this case, I go for a 50-50 split, so we could accept up to 6.6 .6 volts at the panel to see only 3.3 volts at the ADC. So I have the two resistors right up here. They are both 1K. Finally, I probably want to go for higher resistors like 10K or something like this, but that's what I have available right now. And that's what I'm going to start with. Of course, later we can also think about a DC-DC converter, but for the start, I think that's perfectly fine. So let's wire everything and go ahead. Everything is hooked up now and let's check out what we've done here. First of all, at the top, we have the voltage divider which sits right here. You can see that the plus of the solar panel, the red one, is coming into the voltage divider, flowing through the first resistor, going through the second resistor and going back via the black cable right into the ground of the ESP32. Meanwhile, the minus 
the black one, the black wire of the solar panel goes directly through the black and afterwards through the brown wire right into the ground of the ESP32 as well. So there are several ground pins on the ESP32. So I just used the different ground pins to actually have one common ground for the whole setup. What we can see as well is here at the top that between the two resistors, we have actually this additional red jumper cable going right into the ESP32 onto pin 34, where we have the ADC connected. So we are basically measuring the voltage drop over this second resistor. So we're basically only measuring half of the overall voltage. I hooked up a voltmeter as well, which we can see here. So you can see those voltmeter measurement pins are connected to the second resistor as well. So the value, the voltage value you can see here, right here on the voltmeter is the same what our ESP32 sees. Right now we're at 0 0.9 volts. So that's much less than we had before. Before we had more than five, so we should end up with the 50-50 split at something around 2.5 volts, probably a bit more. First of all, the solar panel may be not longer in the perfect angle because maybe the voltmeter is giving it a shadow or the ESP is a little bit up in the air, also creating a shadow on the panel, maybe, but mainly we have our voltage divider, which is quite small. Remember, I only had 1K resistors, so we have 2k in total. So the whole circuit sees a 2k resistance between the production of the energy, the production of the voltage and the current right here at the panel and ground. There's quite a significant current flowing through the whole circuit. And so for the solar panel is not longer in idle, it's actually working. It actually needs to provide voltage. And as soon as a solar panel or battery needs to provide current and voltage at the same time, of course, it will have a voltage drop normally. So that's what we're seeing right now. This is a voltage drop. Those five volts have been only in idle without any load. Now we have a load attached, those 2K. Now we see the voltage drop. But that's fine for us because we are not wanting to produce electricity. We just want to measure the difference depending on the angle. So we could keep a setup like this in the future, but we could also go for higher resistors, which will cause a lower voltage drop or we could also go for a totally different approach to decrease the voltage that our voltage is within the range of our ADC, or we could also add an additional external ADC that's capable of eating the whole voltage range of our solar panel. So that's up for the future decision. Let us know in the comments what you think is the right approach, external ADC, or using the internal ADC with a voltage divider consisting out of resistors, or using a DC-DC converter, what do you think is the best approach? Let us know. Anyway, let's try to increase this voltage, putting the solar panel into the light and we can see it's increasing. Now we have 1.05. As soon as we lay it down again, we have only 0 0.8. So that's actually working as we anticipated. Next up, we have to read this value at the ADC with a piece of code and our ESP32. To get this done, I set up a little piece of code, which I will show you right now. So I try to squeeze everything within the frame of the camera, which is not working perfectly fine. But anyway, let's try to talk about this quickly. So I will just raise the camera a bit so you can see what's going on the screen. So on the right hand side, you see the code itself. It's basically just the setup of the ADC and we defined a variable that's actually set to zero at the beginning and then it will read the ADC value, put it into the variable and print the variables value. So for the value of the ADC on the serial monitor, which you can see on the left hand side. And there you see there's a new number produced every second because the delay is one thousand milliseconds. And before we go ahead, I will just zoom in onto the serial monitor and put the voltmeter right next to it. So you can see the correlation of the voltmeter and the ADC. So sorry for the shaky camera of you right now. And I hope you can see it a bit. On the right hand side, you can see the voltage, which is right now 0 0.3 volts. And on the left hand side, you can see the ADC value, which is of course, based on the ADC's resolution. So it's kind of jumping around, but we are at around 300, 320, 
for the ADC and 0.5 volts on the amp meter. There is no like correlation, like multiplied by 100 or something like this. That's just coincidence here. I think it's 4095 or something steps we have to showcase those 3.3 volts in total with the ADC. So let's give it a try and increase a bit the voltage. I will just pull over the LED light a bit. So now we have 0 0.43 and we have 480, 460 on our serial monitor for the serial print for the ADC reading. So that's already working quite well. All right, back to the bit more stable camera view. We learned quite a bit, I think. We can use the solar panel as a sensor. That's already approved. We can use the ESP32 to read it right away. Optional, we will have an external ADC or we can use this voltage divider. We will discuss this in the comments, but anyway, it's working. The principal idea is working. So next up is to build a proper setup here, maybe solder something down on a circuit board. Of course, refining the code to see the actual voltage level, or maybe also mapping it to a scale like from zero to a hundred percent. How intense is the solar production right now? So we can map those values. As soon as we've done this, we will try to mount two motors, two servos underneath the solar panel so we can adjust the two angles and so far reach every single angle we need. And as soon as we've done this, we will set up a script that's basically moving the solar panel onto a specific position, like zero degree, measuring, saving this value, then moving next. And it's up to discussion if we save this in a variable or if we save this in a database, I don't know, depending on how many measurement points, I think we need a database at some point or we use variables for easier processing. But on the other hand, as soon as we have the data in a database, we can analyze it afterwards as well. So that's up for discussion. Anyway, we will move to a certain number of positions like 45 degrees, 45 degrees on the other end, 45 degrees on this axis. 45 degrees on this axis and so on and so forth. And of course, we are not going only into 45 degree steps. We will have much smaller steps. So basically the solar panel is moving for quite a while, maybe for a minute to have all those measurements. We will map them into our database or variables. And afterwards we can decide quite quickly which variable, which measurement was the biggest and we can check for the angle at this measurement. And so far we know what's the perfect angle right now. And then we can repeat this whole process once in a while, like every 15 minutes or something like this, because the sun is not moving this fast and it's making no sense to, to move the main solar panel every 30 seconds or so by only one degree. It's making much more sense to move than like a bit within every 15 minutes or something like this. So that's the whole idea of this solar tracker setup. I hope you liked the first video with the first experiments and next videos will be about proper voltage divider, proper reading, proper wiring, introducing the motors, and of course also some more coding. So stay tuned, make sure to be subscribed in case you want to follow this project and let me know all your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.